Hi there, this is Anmesh from Pixim Perfect and today I'm going to show you how to create beautiful sun rays or light rays coming through an opening in Photoshop. Whether it is trees in the forest or a simple window in a room, the concept remains the same. All we need is a couple blend modes and a filter, that's it. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are back in the magical world of Photoshop and if you want to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, you already know what to do, check the links in the description. To get started, let me give you a clue. Have a look at this image. Here we have a forest and here we have some openings, some bright areas. So we already have the bright areas, we already have the shape of the openings, what can we do with it? Think about it. Now step number one would be selecting the bright areas. And there are lots of ways of doing it. But we're going to use color range. Now you might be thinking, how come color range? It's about brightness, right? Let me show you. So go to select and then color range. Now besides color, color range also has highlights, shadows and midtones. Yes, it does. So in the select drop down menu, select highlights. We want to select the highlights. First of all, decrease the fuzziness all the way to the left and just focus on the range. So white are the areas which are going to be selected. So you're just going to select just those areas. You can also put a selection preview and you can set that to black matte so that everything that is selected will show up in color and everything that is not selected will be black. So as you can see, some green areas are being selected. That's fine. No problem at all. Just increase the range and you'll be good. But if you increase the range too much, see the bright areas are going black. We don't want that. So you need to find the right balance right there. Now let's increase the fuzziness just a touch to make the transitions a little smoother, not so much. Now, once it's OK, once you're satisfied, just hit OK. Now we have a selection of the bright areas. Now, let's put that on a new layer. To do that with the selection active, just press Ctrl or Command J. Now you have the highlights on a new layer. You can just name them highlights. This brings us to step number two, which is blurring the bright areas to create the light rays. We already have the shape of the bright areas. Why don't we blur it to create the light rays in a particular direction. Yes, we can do it. But before we do anything, always convert the highlights into a smart object so that we can change the values later or make changes later. So go to filter and then convert for smart filters and then hit OK. All right. Now this is a smart object. Whatever filter we apply, blurring or anything, we can change the values later. Go to filter and then blur. This is fun. Choose Radial Blur. Now inside of Radial Blur, we don't want Spin. We just want Zoom, right? Select Zoom. Increase the amount all the way to 100. Now the higher the quality you choose, the more time it's going to take to process. So we have three qualities. Draft, which is the poorest. Good means medium. And best means the highest quality. So first, let's set it to Draft. And we're going to position the sun. So find out where the sun is. In this case, have a look at the shadow right here. Shadow is facing this direction. So in this case, I think the sun is right over here somewhere. So we need to add the light rays from that point source. So we need to place it accordingly up and a little bit to the left and just set it to draft because we might have to edit that later. Hit OK. So at this point, it's OK. It's not that great. It needs to go a little up. Double click on the radial blur. And let's move it a little up and just hit OK. Let's see what happens to the blur center. So blur center is right now at this point at the top, a little bit down and a little bit towards the right. So bring it a little down and a little bit towards the right. Hit OK. Yes, right now it looks perfectly fine in that area. Once you have figured out the right position, go back to radial blur and set the quality to best and make sure it's 100. Hit OK. Now the quality will be fine. As you can see, it's taking a little more time to process it. There we go. We have beautiful light rays over here, but the intensity is too low. So how do we double up the intensity? Very easy. Just make a couple copies of it. With the highlight selected, press Ctrl or Command J a couple times. One, two, three, four. Probably let's go one more time. Ctrl or Command J once more. This looks absolutely amazing right off the bat. However, have a look at this. This area is a little too sharp, right? And sharpness towards the light source is fine, but this area has to be a little blurry. So we need to add some blur to it. To add some blur, we have to add some collective effects. So of course we can merge all of it, but that would be destructive. We want to keep it as non-destructive as possible. So why don't we group them all into a smart object? 
that's wonderful. So select the first highlight copy and then hold the shift key and select the bottom most one, right? All of them are now selected. Now right click on it and just select convert to smart object. All of them will group to one smart object, which is amazing. Now, anytime you want to edit any of this, all you have to do, you have to just double click on the thumbnail. Another document will open up with all these layers. Isn't that wonderful? You can close it for now. Now let's add some blur to it. Let's name it just highlights. Just go to filter, blur gallery, and then field blur. Now field blur allows you to create different points of blur. So right here, we have this point. We don't want any blur right here in the middle. So we'll take this point in the middle and decrease the blur to zero pixels. Here, I'm gonna create one more point and I'm gonna increase the blur. That's fine. Now let's create one more here. 15 is fine, let's create a couple around. So as it gets further from the light source, it gets a little blurry. It looks more realistic. Now hit okay, and there you go, you have the blur right in place. This looks amazing. Now, since these are light sources, we don't want it to darken anything. We always want it to brighten stuff. So what is the blend mode which brightens stuff? Screen, right? So change the blend mode of the highlights from normal to screen. Have a look at the instant difference, right? You can now see the leaves, everything is brightening, it's realistic. So this is the normal. See, it's darkening stuff, not looking right. And let me set that to screen. Wow, that looks absolutely wonderful. Now to make it more realistic, we don't want the highlights in all the areas. We wanna just subtract it from some areas in a soft fashion. So let's create a mask. So click on the mask button right there. Take the brush, make sure it's a big soft brush with black as the foreground color. You can press X to toggle between the foreground and the background and just take it away from a couple areas like this. You can also decrease the flow if you wanna be subtle about it. So I'm gonna decrease it to about 18% and just paint on a couple areas where you don't want it so much, just a little bit here and there, right? That is pretty nice. Now, once we have done that, if you wanna add some color to these light rays, you can do that as well. Let's create a solid color adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose solid color. Whatever color you wanna choose, you can. So I'm gonna choose a bright yellow. You can always change it later. Hit OK once you're satisfied and then hold the Alt or Option, click on the line between these two to create a clipping mask. So the yellow is now applied to it, you can change it anytime, double click on it. Maybe you wanna make it a little more reddish or a little more yellowish, whatever you wanna do, you can. So I'm gonna keep it at that, this one is fine, hit OK. I love this color. Now after applying this color, there's something missing. Something is missing. And this brings us to step number three, and that is, creating the light spots on the surface. So the light is falling with these light rays, which is fine, but there are no light spots on the surface. So we need to create that, right? Without them, it just, it's pointless. So the light is falling on the surface and there's no light in the surface, just doesn't make sense. So all you need to do, you need to create light spots with the same color you chose here. So create a new layer, click on the new layer button. Now you can name it light spots, there you go. Take the brush, make sure this color is selected. So double click on the foreground color and the color picker shows up. So you can drag from the image and just take it here, it picks up that color, right? So you can even go outside of Photoshop. That color, once it's picked, maybe I'll, I'm gonna make it a little more saturated and just hit okay and then start brushing with that color. You can change it later, keep in mind. Solid color adjustment layer, clipping mask, you can change it anyway. So let's paint on the areas. You can increase the flow back to 30, 40%. I'm gonna go 40 and paint on a couple areas. This area will be a little too bright. Don't worry about it. It's gonna look a little strange first, but it's gonna look okay later. Now, once we have done that, change the blend mode from normal to color dodge. So normal to color dodge. There you go. It's still not looking right. Why? It's Because it's also brightening the dark areas. So double click on the right hand side of the layer. This opens up the layer styles dialog box. We need to take it away from the dark areas. So in the blend if section, take the slider of the underlying layer from left to right, like so. Now, it's very harsh. So hold the Alt or Option, click on the slider to break it apart and just break it apart like this until it looks pretty nice. So to my eyes, this looks pretty good. Now, once you're happy with this, hit okay. And control with the fill. 
Phil controls the projection when you have selected one of the special 8 blend modes. So color dodge is one of those special 8 blend modes that when you change the fill, the projection of the blend mode changes. So decrease the fill a little bit. See it's getting more and more realistic. Gradually increase it to the point it looks real. Yes, that's fine. About, let's go for 60%. So here's the before, here's the after. I think I have to erase over here. Maybe I should a little bit. So take the eraser and decrease the flow to 10%. And let's just erase it over here. It was kind of too much, but it's wonderful. You can take the brush and you can just additionally paint some areas. Now, if you want to add some more light to it, you can do this as well. So create a curves adjustment layer, my favorite, all time favorite, click on the adjustment layer and then choose curves. Now let's take it up just like this. Now it's yellow light. So we need to go to the blue channel and take the highlights down because blue is the opposite of yellow and decreasing the blue makes yellow appear. So there you go. And then select the mask, press control or command I and take the brush white as the foreground color. And then you can just dab in a couple areas just like that. That's it. Nothing much. You can increase the flow a little bit, just creating some atmosphere, some lights here and there, maybe here, right? Just simple atmosphere. And if you want, you can also do this. You can double click on the right hand side of the lamp, take it away from the dark areas. So hold the Alt or Option, click on the slider, break it apart and just take it away. There you go. And it's looking great, but something is missing. The sense of separation because the light rays are too broad. We need to shape it a little bit. And that's easy to do. With the light spot selected, create a mask. Take the brush, make sure it's black as the foreground color, flow at 100. And then according to the light rays, just start separating them like this. Erase it. Now you can turn off the curves for a moment. Then you can just erase a couple areas maybe from the middle. See, it's creating a separation. We need some separation here as well. See, it's making it look very realistic. So without the mask, with the mask, you're having some kind of some sort of separation. See this separation, it's looking amazing. Here's the before, here's the after. Now it's looking more realistic. We need to create those separations here. See, before, after. So this light, this area is not getting light. So it's getting some separation. So the more the separation you create, the better. Now, if you want, you can also create some specular highlights. Yes, that's wonderful. So if you create one more new layer on top of the light spots and you can name this extreme highlights. And then you take the brush with yellow color selected. You just start making dots over here, just like this. And then change the blend mode again to color dodge. And at this point, double click on the right side of the layer. This is fun. And just uncheck this transparency shapes layer. Have a look at this highlight. Amazing, isn't it? So from the underlying layer, always take it away from the dark areas, just like so. Hit OK. And have a look at this highlight. It's amazing. So you can create a couple more here as well. Now you can also decrease the fill here as well if you want to but these really look good. Let's zoom out and see how these look. It's kind of too much at this point. Maybe we should also paint a couple other areas as well. Now let's decrease the fill and gradually increase it. I kind of like this, but I don't like it in this area. So I'm gonna take an eraser and erase it from here. Flow 100%, erase it from here as well. That's beautiful. Let's zoom out. This is wonderful. Now you can just turn on the curves and see how this looks. Curves is kind of too much. So I'll just double click on the right hand side of the lamp and then take it even more further. Just limit it to the bright areas and then just decrease the opacity. Just a touch. So here we have our image finally ready with beautiful light rays. Let me show you the before and after. So this is the before and this is the after. Isn't that beautiful? Let's do a quick little recap. First of all, select the bright areas. That's it. So that we have the shape ready. Second step, blur it out using your favorite method. In this example, we chose radial blur. And third step is creating those light spots. Light rays without light spots, 
doesn't make sense, right? So select the bright areas, blur it out, add the light spots. That's what it is. I hope this tutorial helped you. And if it did, make sure to give us a like. And also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tip, trick or tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. And I would like to thank all these special and nice people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Pixim Perfect free for everybody forever. Thanks for all your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one. Until then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.